Okay, so this is not saying that the answer is going to be negative when the negative is inside the parentheses. It's saying that this 2 outside of the parentheses is a 2 being multiplied 4 times. It's being raised to the 4th power. In front of it, there's an invisible negative 1. When it's inside the parentheses, that negative is trapped with the number that it's in front of. And so this one is a negative 2 versus this one is a negative 1 times 2. I told you, we like our invisible ones and usually they're convenient in math. In this case, it adds to a little confusion, which is why we're gonna take some notes on this. You guys ready? Okay, so this is outside of the parentheses. That negative in front of it means opposite. It's the opposite of two to the fourth power. I'm happy to see most of you taking notes along with me. So the first thing I'm going to write in our, exam our equivalent expression here, I'm going to write 2 to the 4th power, which would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to put those in parentheses because we're going to be talking about order of operations in a minute. And things inside parentheses get done first, yes? but also exponents get done first. So we're gonna do two to the fourth power first, and when I'm pulling that exponent away from it and putting this, showing it with the base four times, I'm gonna put in parentheses to show it goes first. And then that negative one goes in front of it. When I multiply what's inside the parentheses, I'm going to get one number. Positive four. What's two times Positive two times two times two? 16. <laughs> I'm going to get 16, but the value of this is negative 16 because once that inside is done, then we have to multiply it by the negative one that's outside. In this case, we have negative 2 to the fourth power. Because that negative is trapped inside of the parentheses, we are going to show a negative 2 being multiplied four times. Oops, because I said 4, I wrote a 4. Isn't it funny how the brain works? I want you to think back to the Agile Mind activity you were just doing. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives being multiplied. So my answer is going to end up being negative. positive. Because negative times negative would be positive times another negative would take it back to negative, and then times this would bring it back to positive. It's 16. Yes? If the power was uh, 5, would it be negative? If the power was 5, it would go back to being negative. Great question. Okay, what do we have outside the parentheses here? So this is going to start off with what word? Opposite. Opposite of 2 to the 4th power. Inside the parentheses, we just have a 2. This is going to look very much like our first problem. That 2 is being raised to the 4th power first. And then outside in front of this parentheses, there's an invisible 1. It's easier to envision it there because that two has the parentheses, but it's also here. Yes? So if the negative sign is on the outside, there's always an invisible one? Yes. Remember the other day we talked about every negative number has a factor of negative one? Right? So we can think of this as negative one times two. That's what's really happening here. And the two is being raised to the fourth power and then we deal with the negative. But when it's stuck inside the parentheses, that's different. And why do I want you guys to have this in your notes? Because every year when I teach this, I have to review it to make sure I've got the language right. It's just weird, right? You could convince yourself to go the other way. So I want this in your notes so you'll have something to reference. Okay? Okay. Anybody want to guess the meaning I'm going to write down for that last example? It's going to start with opposite. Ah, just off my pencil. Ty, go ahead. 
opposite of negative two. The power of four. Yep. Very close to what I'm going to write. Opposite of negative two to the fourth power. I was right. So I'm going to show four negative twos being multiplied by each other. And I'm going to put a fancy bracket thing on it because I want all of those negative twos to be captured together. And then we get a negative one in front. Who wants to predict the answer? Is it a positive or a negative 16? It's positive. It's positive. It's positive. It's positive. It's positive. It's positive. These in here are going to give us a positive. But after we're done with the inside, we have to do the outside, and we're going to go back to negative. negative. And you are right. There's five negatives here. So it's like if there's an odd number, then it's negative. Mm -hmm. The even number makes positive. Correct. Which is what Agilemind was trying to get you to do on that first slide. But I'll bet if you guys go back to it, you'll be like, oh, I get it now. Okay, I would like you to take a look next at this paper. What does it remind you of? And what surprises you about it? It reminds me of hopscotch also. You don't know what hopscotch is? Sorry. Oh, that was like my life in fourth grade. No, I never had a that in dodgeball. <laughs> so let's take a look. What letter are you used to seeing here? What do you normally call this? Parentheses is usually what we see here. It's not just parentheses. I want you guys to know I've always thought of my seventh grade students as future algebra students, not just because you guys are in honors math. And in algebra, we don't just use parentheses. We use all sorts of grouping symbols. And there's some listed over here. This is why I would like you to call it order of operations and think of the acronym GEMDAS instead of PEMDAS because the G stands for all the grouping symbols, not just parentheses. Parentheses are included, brackets like we just used. Braces. These fancy braces, not like the kinds in your face, but they look like that little squiggle. Absolute value bars is a grouping symbol. Radical sign, that's something we will be using next year. And if you've got something above and below, Right? In a division problem, you could also be doing the parentheses first. This is also here for a little math geekiness. Here's a little math trivia. Did you know that there's a name for that line in the division problem or in a fraction? It's called a vinculum. I knew that. Say that. Vinculum. Vinculum. And that way, if you are ever on Jeopardy in 15, 20 years and you get some weird question, you'll be like, this is all this taught me that word. No, it's the only place I could ever it's see like you using it. It's like you're doing your like, finals in college and you just randomly remember that one word. You can impress your college professor with that, yes. Okay, we are going to cut this and get this glued into our notebooks. <clears throat> I would like you to fold it in half because that's where you're going to get the cut line. I already glued my earlier notebook, so I just want to show you really quickly. This is what it's going to look like today. On the left side, we have our exponents from Friday. Here's our notes we just took. You're going to turn the page. <clears throat> on the left side, I want the names of the grouping symbols. And on the right side, I want order of operations. 